Pat McNamara, welcome to the Interrupted Podcast, brother. It is awesome to have you on. I'm really looking forward to this conversation today. Right on. Thanks Thanks for having me. I appreciate uh, you hitting me up and asking me if I could be here. Yeah, right on, man. Well, look, when, when I reach out to you know potential guests, in, in my mind anyway, hopefully uh, it, it reciprocates, but it... Uh, it's, it's always great to be able to just reach out to somebody. You can really just have that connection through socials. That's a positive of them while there are other negatives and um, we can kind of uh, get things rolling from there. And Absolutely. Um, it, you know, as active as, as you are on there um, and just getting the word out about so many aspects of life. Right. Um, it is it is really an honor um, to be on the other side of the microphone from you. All right. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Yeah, right on. So look, well, uh, I, I have a, a million things running through my mind, but um, your mindset that we see uh, through social media and that people have been to any of your trainings and we hear um, y- your name, your company come up a, a lot in, in circles and uh, whether it's law enforcement, first responder, military, um, your name comes up and it's well known. Mm-hmm. Did, uh, where you're at now in life, if, if you could take us back a little bit to um, understand your mindset and how you see the world, your worldview, your understanding about being the Sentinel and uh, training and the things that I do ultimately want to arrive in. What was that, um, the catalyst? What was the change? What Was it when you were a teenager, even younger than that? Did someone instill that? Take us back a little bit to those influences that caused you to be the man that you arrived to be today, if you would. Well, um, you know, easier said than done than given a specific answer. So I'm going to try to break it down a little bit uh, cool. because there's several different facets, right, that that help us to develop into the being that we are presently. Right and and, you, and I mean, we'd be remiss to point or put our finger on one particular thing because a lot of who I am today is because of others. Not that necessarily that I was right in the coattails of others, but I had really, really good mentors in life. Wow. Okay. And I think if you don't take advantage of that, you know, mentorship, you're missing out, man, because there is a knowledge base out there. And, you know, we have to realize, and, and I think I realized this too late in life, that none of us are smarter than any of us because, you know, there was a time when I thought that I was just the cat's meow, like, cause I was a young special ops guy. I was fast tracking all the cool schools, all the qualifications. Um, and I was cocky and had a massive ego, but so did the guys with whom I worked as well. Now, you know, sure, sure. there was a lot of ego. That's it's a lot of type a in the special ops community. Um, but I think when I got to the, I think when I got to the unit, that's when I ate my biggest piece of humble pie. Okay. You know, when I got to, you know, uh, use the sock into the unit, um, because I, w- I had a special ops career before then. And I, I was always top performer in everything I did. Mm. I got to the unit and I was like, holy shit, bro. I am, I am struggling to be mediocre here. Okay. You no. Know? So, um, I, 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 I had to take, that pause and um, realize that, man, I don't know shit. I better shut up more, listen more, uh, put in more hours and, you know, strive to be like these superstars with whom I'm working right now. Mm. Cause I wanted to be that, you know, I wanted to level up, level up, level up, level up. Um, it, so it's an evolutionary process. And then as far as like, um, because your question was real broad. So, you know, you had the Sentinel in there and the social media uh, um, influencing part, all that stuff came, it kind of trickled in. It it wasn't, you know, my part of my five-year plan or anything. (laughs) I mean, I don't have a degree in good ideas. You know, I just happened to uh, uh, act on epiphanies, you know, when you have those epiphanies, I think that's, that's when you gotta, you gotta act on those immediately, you know, especially, Afterlife, after you retire from the military, you retire from law enforcement and stuff, you've got to act on those when you have them. Um, and be, and another thing that I learned, speaking of acting on those, is you know a a, a plan without action is better than uh, uh, I mean a- action without a plan is sometimes better than a plan with no action. You, you know, so as long as you just act on those ideas. Um, you could formulate the plan later. I mean, you know, it's like, all right, well, this, this, this dog has hunt, you know, this, this plant has roots. 
let's yeah. act on this. Let's let's nurture this. Let's you know let's cultivate this idea a little bit more and see where it goes without, of course, getting into the weeds and and having the ability to shit can that idea if you realize because it's easy to fall in love with an idea too. Mm-hmm. I, I tell it to my wife all the time. I say, Rebecca, <laughs> I have an idea. And I'm kind of in love with it. <laughs> so, but she's my, she's a real good sounding board because it happens all the time with her. I'm like, yeah. oh my God, Rebecca, I got this fantastic idea. And I'll explain it. And sometimes she'll, and then she'll pause and it'll scare me. And I'm like, oh man. And she'll say, that's a good idea. But there are times when she goes, I don't see where you're going with this. And I'm like, oh man, uh, yeah, I was yeah, yeah. really in love with that. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> right. Well, it takes a lot of a lot of courage even to step into an idea, even, right? Or when you're like, "Hey, how do I move forward?" Right? Everything's mm-hmm. always moving. Um, how do I, you know, step out in front of this? How do I have the courage to take on the risk, um, no matter what the plan is? Maybe it's a, a mission setting. Maybe it's a business idea. Um, having the courage to do that, and mm-hmm. that that I think even fleshing that out in the short part of a conversation is a lot of what the interrupted podcast is all about preparing for the unknown, like always being ready um, to Mm. take on the unknown and um, the courage is what helps us step into that. Right. And so I think a a piece of that, which I see from you um, from afar is the discipline and structure element mm-hmm. that you build in. And maybe that's more of even what I was kind of getting at with some of the question is, were, were you just, were you someone even as a child that was just had the drive and the initiative to take on? Or is that something through the military that you developed or where the importance of that really kind of rose to the top to say, if I can, um, I don't know what's ahead of me, but if I can do some core things, Mm -hmm. we'll be able to step into other things. Yeah. So in childhood, definitely not. (laughs) Uh, And there was a, there was a turning point in my life though. Okay. So most of childhood, definitely not. I was sort of a a very, very average quirky kid. I had a bunch of strange hobbies that the other kids didn't have, you know, riding a unicycle to school and bird watching and drawing playing the violin. I mean, these weren't your normal, you know, writing poetry. And I was like, oh man, I love a sonnet. You know, I am the pentameter, man. I can write that stuff like nobody's business. Sure. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't the, you know, I wasn't the coolest kid. <laughs> you know, when you, when you, when you write a sonnet and ride a unicycle and your dream is to be in the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus, it's not, you know, <laughs> but um, I started sport. I started wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, it was kind of a, uh, a defense mechanism, uh, really, because I was, I had a reason to get tougher. I, I had a reason, you know, it was kind of like a survival mechanism okay. and I started wrestling and man, did I suck? I mean, bad, bad, bad. Uh, this was in high school. So, you know, high school then four years. So, uh, 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 ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th grade, you know, so okay. it was, ju- it was junior high school. So before middle school, you know? Uh, and, um, and then high school and my first two years, I sucked. And after my, I, I won one match in my second year when I was in, uh, uh, 10th grade, I won one match and I remembered the feeling of victory. It was the first time I was ever like victorious and had a feeling of man. You know what I mean? Like yeah, dude, yeah. I had a feeling of dude, not, you know, I mean, cause I was victorious when I'd see certain birds that I hadn't been able to, you know, spot. <laughs> but they were, I really couldn't share that with my peer group. There you go. There but you when go. I won my first wrestling match, huh. it was a whole uh, different sensation of winning, you know, that small victory. And I wanted more of it in order to have more of it. You have to apply yourself. You can't rely on the school, the team, the coach to make you a champion. You have to put in the extra effort, just like with any sport, right? You have to put in the extra effort or any skill, whatever. Um, So you have to go beyond the uh, institutional um, learning and coaching and training. And a bunch of us would go to the college in uh, New Britain, Connecticut and wrestle with, with collegiate athletes. And these were next level dudes, you know, and they were so cool about it because they were like, you want to be a better rest, a high school wrestler. Hell, so they wouldn't twist us up, you know, they would teach us shit yeah. and train us hard. And uh, those of us who put in that extra mile 
during the summers like that, we emerged champions. And in my uh, junior and senior year, I couldn't be beaten in wrestling. I couldn't be. And, and you know, when you have uh, that sensation, especially when it's new to you, especially when you grew up, uh, let's say a loser. I mean, not, I wasn't necessarily a loser, <laughs> but I was no winner, you know? Okay. Uh, um, so y- y- you pack on muscle and your grades are getting better and you're lettering and you're uh, a varsity team. And, and then I became the captain. Uh, and uh, so that was the beginning of like structure for me, you know, oh, okay. like self-discipline, self yes. like yep. structure. And the only other recourse, the only a logical path after high school was to join the military and I, I knew nothing about the military nothing so i went to every recruiter every one of them because i just wanted to and, and and the question was simple to each recruiter what's basically the what's how can i fast track to badassery you know, what's <laughs> yeah, get me there <laughs> i didn't want to get stagnant you know and, and the army okay. had the best answer at the time because right. the navy's got it going on with special ops the marine corps the air force you know they've all got it going on but there was a there was a lag, you know. There's like waiting periods. There's like, um, you know, obligatory like, uh, um, uh, 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 what's the word? I'm ter- the, the like term. Benchmarks not- you have to meet. Like- yeah, 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 yep. And um, and the army had both army rangers. You know, after you graduate infantry basic and jump school, you could sure. go to a ranger battalion and earn your right to go to ranger school. Mm-hmm. And and special forces at the time had the 18 x-ray program. It was brand new. SF baby program. So once again, you'd, you'd go to uh, infantry basic training to jump school and then right to the special forces course. Uh, so that, I mean, th- th- I never recommend that to new people. <laughs> I never do because it's, but, well, because you have to have some kind of, me- you have to have mental capacity for that. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, there's a lot of study that goes on in SF course and you need background. You need infantry tactics. You need leadership time. I didn't have shit, none of that. So I had to re- rely once again, back to that um, mentorship, rely on mentors. Okay. And the way I earned mentors is work ethic, volunteering for every freaking shit detail that came down the pipe, mm-hmm. every one. And, um, so these guys who were staff sergeants, E sevens, you know, from Ranger Battalions, eighty second Airborne, they saw this and they were like, "Yep, you are worth a shit to uh, to mentor." There you Oof, go, man. That, so in the work ethic, where did I get that from? I got it from, you know, not only wrestling before high school, but but I worked too. I went to school and I had two part time jobs. I was busy. I was busy okay. with that stuff. So that's what started it out right there. Wow. Well, how when when you were getting into the military and starting to have that exposure to really good mentorship, how did you deal with failure then versus like even now things you've learned? Because I think that goes a long way into that preparation mindset mm-hmm. of of not getting bogged down when something really just comes in and just I mean it seems like it just busts everything you had envisioned, everything right. that you wanted. Um, what, how did you see things then? Versus now, because I I hear a lot back from the viewers about, you know, that that is a, the pivotal moment is yep. when all of a sudden you have that vision, you're taking that risk, you're having the courage to step into something new, and then something just implodes, whether it's something oh, you brought on yourself or something yeah, yeah. completely yeah. out of your control. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, and, and the likelihood of that happening is, is pretty great, right? In any, and, and it could be in like, uh, uh, you know, law enforcement training, when you, when you want to go to a, uh, you know, a special ops team, a SWAT team, it could be in the military, you know, it, when you want to level up, you know, you have to accept that there's associated risk. And that's one of the things I tell people who write me, Pat Mack, I want to join the military. I want to be a badass, blah, blah, blah. I said, man, yes, this is what I recommend you do. Mm-hmm. And keep in mind that the road, there's no shortcuts on this road. It's bumpy as hell. There's tons of obstacles on this road too. Tons of obstacles. And you might get turned around and have to go back to the beginning of the road. Mm. But at the end of the day, that worth that road is worth taking. Um, and, and as far as failure goes, I can write, I can write a book about it. <laughs> I have failed some, it, but I think I remember, um, you know, first failure was injury. 
jump school. I, w- I was a toad jumper. Mm. Uh, and it set me back months because it separated my bicep, pulled it into my forearm, broken ribs, concussion, dislocated right. shoulder. Um, and that was months. And I was just 18. I just started out. Man. Yeah. Whole career head. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, but I think, you know, the military too, just to remind you, yeah, get, get well. And you could start, you could start this over again, because that's the thing, unless you really fuck up, you're going to be given a second chance. You know what I mean? It, it, yeah, so if, the you, opportunity if it's not, is still there. right. If it's not a, a, a moral ethical dilemma, you know, you didn't lie, steep, chill, uh, goof off and you're invited to come back, man, I, you are a freaking moron. And if, if you don't accept but it sucks having to go back through military training. It's like, God dang, I got to do this all <laughs> over again. Yeah. Because some of them, you know, I was in, I was well into it. Like um, some of the schools you don't want to return to like combat dive school. It's one of the hardest military school, military wide, military wide, as far as physical schools go, yeah. that one sucks bad. And uh, I, I failed out of that one. And, immediately when I went back to my unit, I asked for a uh, pre-scuba date, you know, to get me ready for the next day. Oh, okay. Immediately, immediately. I was like, I need to get back to this as quickly as possible. As quickly okay. as possible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, but I think it's a good thing, especially in special ops, you're encouraged. It's encouraged. It's like, because you're not alone. There's <laughs> other people that you're working with. Yeah. I'm a twofer. I'm a twofer. I'm a threefer, you know, that kind of stuff. Sure. Sure. So well, I'm I'm not alone in that, you know, in failing and returning. I talk right. to dudes all the time. We talk about different selections and and they'll say, Yeah, I'm a two for there. I'm like, Well, you ain't the only one, bro. I'm a two for two. So <laughs> yeah. but kudos to you for being a two for. Because there are those who who will take that failure so hard and they can't recover from it and um uh and they don't avenge it. Now now who are they? You know, I mean, dude, when you soul search at the end of the day and you, and you realize, man, I should have, would have, could, I should have avenged that failure. I, I I don't know how you could shoulder that, you know, that kind of, cause it's self kill. You didn't hurt anybody else, but, but you hurt yourself in yeah. not seeking the betterment of the person that you are. Mm, I mean, yeah. I, 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 um, that, that's so good the failing is, is it's a, I have failed in life so many times. It's not, and I wouldn't, I would, I wouldn't change a freaking one of them. I mean, in business, everything I have rock bottom, uh, failed. I mean, dick in the freaking earth, like mm-hmm. real bad failure, massive debt, horrible relationships. I wouldn't change any of it because right now solace, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. like peace, yeah. man. I am at such peace right now. You know, I, there's like nothing that bothers me. Uh, and even uh, people, somebody asked me yesterday, hey, how do you deal with, so you have such a big online present, you must get freaking haters. I said, yeah, I get some. I said, I don't care one bit, man. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. This, the softest pillow is a clean conscience. And I, I know I'm not goofing anything up. You know, right. I'm, I know that I'm right, that I'm righteous, you know, and. And that I'm doing good for others. So yeah. I don't care. Man. I just, I just learned not to give a shit. <laughs> well, it's interesting that you said that. Um, and I, two weeks ago, I had a conversation with Ray Cash about exactly what you're talking about. And something that shines through with you mm-hmm. is that, that authenticity it's while we've never met each other in person and I've not been to any of your courses, but the authenticity that comes through is like, it's very believable to see. Mm-hmm. It's like, you are very secure with where you're at in life, your mission and what the road and the path that you're on. And I, that's, that's the people that I want to hear from and learn right. from because while, you know, you don't know that until you actually get to spend a lot of time with somebody, the people that I tend to gravitate towards and reach out to are that ones like, man, I don't think that guy's that different than what I'm seeing on the camera. And can I be right. a poor judge of character? Sure. But at the end of the day, it's like that right there, the day in, day out grind that they're willing to put themselves out there. I, I think there's something to that. There's no victimhood in the failure. And and that mm-hmm. goes back to even what you were saying. It's like when that failure comes, it's easy to be like, man, I, 
I, I suck. I'm not going to get better. And I, I never reach out to that person or I never pick up that book to study or I never, mm-hmm. you know, say, yep, that, that's not going to define me right now you know, right. when I get and, through that course. And we're all going to go through that, those moments of dread af- after failure. Okay. We're all going to beat ourselves up. We're going to, we all, we're all going to should have, would have, could have, this is so jacked, man, you, you know, but, um, but how, how fast do you recover from that? And say, all right, well, shit, let me uh, replan, regroup, go into contingency planning mode and figure out next step um, so that I could uh, avenge that failure or do better next time. Uh, Because that's what helps us as people develop into stronger people. And man, I feel, I feel for the people who can't, you know, who, who take that failure so hard and it just crushes them, you know, mentally, emotionally just crushes them. I mean, I've been crushed by it, but I'm like, well, shit, everything's a competition challenge accepted. Let me freaking see if I could climb out of this hole and, and do whatever I was doing better than before. And, uh, man, I, so I wouldn't change any of any of those failures, any of the hard times, I would not go back and say, yeah, I wish I would have done this differently. Yeah. No, it takes some hard conversations with yourself in those moments. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think there's a learning element. Um, to me, I, I perceive someone like yourself that you're constantly trying to learn. Mm-hmm. And there's there's always that next challenge. It's like, I need to figure that out. Right. Like, I, and And that only comes by through failure because it's mm-hmm. like, that guy's doing something that I'm not. And that continuing ed part of life um, yep. that may not be in college. It may be, you know, just uh, building a relationship with somebody new, whatever that is. Like there's how, how do you push the envelope in making sure that you're, you're staying uh, relevant on the cutting edge, right? Um, mm-hmm. Learning everything you can. Right. Yeah. And, and, and uh, you said uh, a, a key word that I tell people too, and you said it is, I tell people, be curious, Mm. be curious, be interested, be curious because curiosity uh, can um, lead to innovation, can lead to self-improvement, can lead to um, further education, further learning. You know, that's just on your own, you know, on your own time, but be curious, be interested. And if you're interested, you become interesting. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yep. I I, I, I like, I, I would like to think, you know, at some point, that I know, because I know people like this. They know mm. something about everything. You know what I mean? <laughs> yep, yep. Well, I did um like a Rogan podcast, yeah, and yeah. I and they said, "What's he like?" I said, "Dude, he's interesting because he knows something about everything." There you go. You know, and yep. um, I think it's good for. I tell people that all the time. And the other thing is, the more you know, the less you have to rely on other people to help you out with stuff. Yeah. Uh, and, um, so that's where I'm at now in life. I'm trying to teach people stuff, it, it, you know, <laughs> with humor and just with Absolutely. little snippets on the interwebs. Uh, sure. but it's, um, it, you know what it does too. It, um, when you have a platform like that, where you're doing these kind of things, it gives you, uh, uh, it's fulfilling. It gives you meaning. Mm, okay. Yeah. So, and that's, that's, that's so important, yeah. you know, with, uh, with those of us who, uh, like, guys who uh, separated from the military after 20 plus years, you need that meaning. You need fulfillment. You know, you need to build something. It doesn't need to be tangible. You don't need to build a bridge or a skyscraper. Uh, I, I tell my wife, I'm building a castle. It's not tangible. We can't see it, but that's what I'm building. I'm building a castle, you yeah. know, and it's one rock at a time. You know, I, I, I finished the moat, you know, and, and the drawbridge <laughs> and all that stuff. One, just one rock at a time, man. I want to build that castle. And it seems to me that that meaning you're talking about more often than not of the guys that put themselves out there um, post military careers, it seems like the meaning that rises to the surface the most is when the impact that you're having uh, is directly related to people. Right. Not not the building, not the structure, not mm-hmm. the garden, not the farm, not yep. the car you're getting. It seems like it always comes back to people. Yep. And, and I, I love this um, position I have in this, in this small blue marble, you know, that we call earth. I love it. And, and cause people ask me, they said, well, what do you do on the internet? I said, well, you know what I do? I, I just try to help people be better people. Mm. 
And uh, and apparently I'm doing something right because sure I get just tons and tons and tons of notes from people all over the world. Yeah. Uh, and um, I'm like, hell yeah. And, and there's been so many times I tell my wife, I say, Rebecca, I have no idea what I'm doing here. She goes, just keep doing what you're doing. I'm like, all right. <laughs> you know, because um, I think, um, and I think you said it at the beginning, people genuinely crave genuine because there's so much fake out there, you know, and there's this like, uh, there's this like a uh, war on consciousness, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, and, um, there's so much fake and bullshit out there that people are ge- genuinely craving genuine. And, um, I'm, 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 I'm delivering it. I don't know what I'm doing or how, but it's, but it's so fulfilling, you know, yeah. it's very, very fulfilling. And, uh, it takes, it takes time and it's not monetized, but the, <laughs> But, but the value is way greater sure. than it being monetized, you know, way greater. Uh, it's, it's, um, I'm great. And I'm great. I'm grateful. I'm grateful that I have this. I am grateful that I have it. I mean, really. It's so hard to vet people too, mm-hmm. um, when you're seeing that and, oh, yeah. you know, to, to see through the BS, like, mm-hmm. um, because I, I find I have to start asking myself a lot of questions like, Hey, what's. Is, is there a history of what someone's putting out there? Is there consistency? Is there, who are the people that they are surrounding themselves with? What type of things do you do to try your best to vet someone, whether it's on the internet or maybe it's in person? Like, in, I guess what it comes to building that tribe of people you know, whether it's a distant association through doing a platform like this or whether it's um, someone that it's like, hey, I'm about to bring someone into my circle and that, that vetting, and, and maybe that can even lead in to the bigger conversation of I'd like to get into talking about being the sentinel, sentinel yeah. of your family, of your life. Mm-hmm. Um, Absolutely. How how do we vet people maybe to protect ourselves yep. and maybe not to just use people in a utility sense, but because we crave good relationship? Yeah. And those are important, right? It's, I, 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 I can't tell you how many times I'll tell my kids this. It's not what you know, it's who you know, mm-hmm. you know, know the right people <laughs> um, uh, because there's, there's value in relationships, true freaking value. Um uh, I, I wasn't careful about it until I started business on my own. You know, uh, when I started my T Max, that was 2010. Okay. And um, I realized you've got, when you're in business for yourself, you've got to be so careful with whom you align. Because even if, let's say, you align with somebody um, and it's uh, they're, because they're a conduit or whatever for something else, and they do something slimy, you're guilty by association now. Yeah. And I have not only done that inadvertently, but have been ripped off bad by people, you know, like robbed. And it's been, there's been several people that I was in business with several and, you know, some were like real money. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, Like real money. Um, And uh, so uh, I, I, for about 10 years now, about 10 years, way more careful. You know, my, my inner circle is very, very small. Um, and, um, I, I, I'm careful with whom I align and how I pick and choose takes some time. It takes time. You know, it's like, uh, it took me that a long time. It took me a long time to figure out that in, in a relationship, you know, with, <laughs> uh, with, uh, like, man, you know, in, in past relationships, uh, it's like, damn it, I should have vetted that one better. But now I've got 16 years invested in this shitty freaking relationship. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, but I, I've become a lot better. And uh, there are, you know, like false narratives. You could you could falsely read somebody on the interwebs um, and and align with them or just have this. We could do a podcast together. Um, and you realize that the guy has a whatever a criminal record, or he got arrested a week from now in a in a a child porn ring or something like that. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. So you've you've got to be a little careful. And the good thing about the interwebs is usually usually you could tell by somebody's feed if they're if they're a good egg or if they're 
are red flags. If there's mm-hmm. douchebaggery attached, you can usually tell <laughs> you know, if you're a pretty good judge of character. And by virtue of the fact that I've worked with so many people, so many people in the course, strangers, I've, I've, I've developed an ability to read a human pretty well, you know, in a short amount of time. Sure. And granted on the interwebs, you're not face to face doing a personal interview with somebody, but you could tell, you know, based on the content they're putting out, how they carry themselves, who they're following, there you go. <laughs> who's following them, all that stuff, whether or not you could uh, have a relationship with them. And this relationship could be as simple as doing a podcast with them. Sure. Um, um, helping them out with a piece of work on a range, um, going to a convention and being a spokesperson on their behalf, those kind of things. Yeah. Uh, because it's good to help out good people, um, but it's easy to get sucked in. And I, I, I guess I am very happy because I know people who have this. Uh, um, I know people who are good to a fault and it's screwed them time and time and time and time and time again. Um, I, uh, and I used to be that way and I'm not anymore. I'm not good to a fault. I will tell people, <laughs> no, I have no problem with it anymore. Sure. Yep. I mean, That's if there's, <laughs> it yeah, is. it's, and it's tough if you want it, you know, if you're a person who, who likes to help other people, it's, it's really tough to tell them no. And sometimes you gotta be honest. It's like, bro, I just don't have the time, man. When I used to, I was, I would just jam shit in the pipeline all the time, jamming and jamming it. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, and, uh, and then it either um, it'll come back to bite you in the ass in a couple of different ways. Number one, you've you've uh, overstepped your bounds. You have no room for yourself or your family, or uh, they'll they'll take advantage of you. You know, nice to a fault. So I'm not yeah. that way anymore. I haven't been for I don't, about about ten about ten years. Yeah, about okay. that. Well, it's worth it's worth the time to check in on the people that are about to take some of your time or that yep. you're going to make time for. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, that's a, a, a an entry level step. And right. whether it's the guy that's about to date your daughter or whether it's that guy that wants to enter a business partner or that person reaching out because they want to, you know, have you on the podcast. Right. And it's worth that time. Absolutely. Um, and, and, and maybe you miss sometimes, maybe you don't. But. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, and I, I've missed a couple of times in the past couple of years, you know, with, uh, uh, like with podcasts, for instance, you know, mm-hmm. I realized, oh shit, man, <laughs> damn it! <laughs> no. I've 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 been there. I've yes, been there. and it's, yeah. <laughs> it's interesting when it all uh, comes out. Well, look, Pat, let's talk about um, this issue going on in society with outsourcing our safety. And um, I, one of my the the side things I'm asked to do with my job is I. I teach um, a civilian course, uh, a, a presentation course, not a uh, practical course on things to think about with uh, active assailants and just your ge- general threats in the community. And one of the biggest things that strikes home is the mom or dad that sits in that class and they start thinking, um, having to juggle between, do I put my head in the sand or do I think about the worst of humanity and the evil that exists out there? And do I take on preparation for that or do I just continue to hope that statistics are on my side? Yeah, right. And that bad thing doesn't happen to me or I don't find myself in the middle of it. Yeah. And so maybe if you'd start with, you know, what the, the book and like, why, like, what is it to be a sentinel? And then if you could get into some of this outsourcing of safety and why it's a worthwhile task um, to take on, because that is the biggest thing that people walk away from is like, wow, you made me think of something pretty horrible. And I realized that I am not prepared for that day. That And, and, and that's step number one, right? People aren't prepared here. Mm. You know, p- people ask me all the time, hey, I just had a guy two nights ago at my local pub. I've known him forever, older guy. And he's been watching the news, you know, so he's all freaking freaked out. <laughs> news will do and, that to you. And, and yeah, and he, um, for some reason, I had no idea he knows about my online presence or Sentinel book or Sunday Sentinel <laughs> sermon or basic dude stuff or anything. Sure. Because he's just not the type. But he asked me, he says, hey, w- in a world like this today, when things have the potential of going topsy-turvy, and, he, you know, he used like zombie apocalypse to be <laughs> just for hyperbole's sake. Sure. Um, uh, what can I do to better prepare myself? And, you know, n- number one is understand that we don't anticipate it. 
and I don't even think it's likely, but understand that the threat is real. I'm not paranoid. Not one freaking bit, man. I am, I am, I, I am safe and sound, but I am always ready for, for anything. I mean, always, always, but it's a way of life. You know, it just becomes that it becomes a way of life. So I tell them, number one, you, you just got to, you, you've got to understand that, that bad things can happen. And, and, and not, not necessarily just with malice, not with malicious intent. It could just be safety, you know, a bit, a, 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 a chunk of a building falling, a car wreck. Sure. So we've, we've got to be freaking switched on in this world of unconsciousness because we are, the, the, people are in zombie mode. Now people have relinquished their number one defense mechanism as a human being, right? That situation where it's intuition, they've relinquished it. They've shit can it. They've data dumped it. It's right down the toilet. There's no more of it. Um, so I, I told them that I said, just understand that bad shit can happen and just stay switched on, you know? And I talked like co Cooper's color code with him. Yeah. Said, you don't need to be in the orange, bro. Just trickle into the yellow. As soon as you come out, uh, as soon as you wake up in the morning or cross the threshold of your property, that separates you from your castle to the outdoors. You're now in, you trickle into condition yellow. Yeah. You know, you're just looking around. You're look, you're looking at stuff. You're not, you're, you're in, and I, I kind of use that falsely there. You're not looking for stuff. You're just seeing, you know, Observing. you're just aware. You're not, yeah. because if you're looking, you're going to miss, you're going to miss the big picture. Okay. Um, yep. But, uh, uh, Couples like the moms and dads and things, because I'll have them hit me up all the time. Um, they think that being the sentinel uh, is very um, like it's gun centric. You know, they think that I'm like, it's not about that. It's not about that at all. You know, it, it, what you carry on your person day to day is very important. You know, but that's got to start. That's got to start with a flashlight. There you go. <laughs> you know, the flashlight and a pocket knife that goes with you wherever you go. That That right there. And they're like, oh, really? I never thought about carrying a flashlight. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> because we people don't. I mean, but how many times have I needed a flashlight? I can't tell you. Yeah. You no, know, I mean, I carry a gun with me wherever I go. I don't care where, where it is. I'm I'm packing. Um, sure. but am I gonna am I gonna need it? Probably not. But I'm gonna need a flashlight. I'm gonna need a pocket knife. I'm gonna need a first aid kit. I'm gonna need this. I'm gonna need to know how to drive. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna need to have my vehicle in a certain condition, all that stuff. I, I need it not only once a year, but several times a month. I need all go. that stuff. Um, so uh, those are the first things, you know, right there, just be a little more situational aware and uh, just know that bad shit can happen. And it's not necessarily malicious with malicious intent. Uh, but I, I forgot the question you asked. <laughs> no, it was, it was talking about how so much of oh, our yeah, safety yeah. is outsourced. Right. Um, and, and taking on that responsibility. Right. Yes. Of, right. Uh, it's worth, it's a worthy endeavor to be prepared. And yes. that, that might right. mean something different for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Yep. We have to be our own first responders. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have to, we have to know how to respond for ourselves instead of calling 911. Of course you call 911 when bad <laughs> things happen. Sure. But that's your backup plan. You know, you're calling for backup. Yeah. 911 backup. <laughs> so I want backup. I do. I want backup. So I'm going to call 911. But in the interim, I'm probably taking care of stuff. Yeah. And somebody's probably calling 911 for me because I'm going to delegate that authority because I have to take care of this right now, there whatever it is. There you go. Whether it's disarming somebody, uh, uh, um, um, taking care of a bully, helping somebody change a flat tire, or putting a band aid on somebody's somebody somebody's kid's knee who just who fell in town, you know, and sure. and their parents don't have a first aid kit with them <laughs> because you know they just, and they're walking around in flip flops and crap like that and with their cell phones at forty five degree right. syndrome <laughs> zombie mode. <laughs> That that's it's funny you said that. I when when I read your book years ago, it was uh that was something I introduced, and it just blew people's minds to be like that forty five degree culture that you talk about. Yep, there. yep. And and and, and, and back, I don't know when I wrote Sentinel. It was two thousand twelve, thirteen. I don't know, something like that. But now it's way more prevalent. Mm. I mean, it's <laughs> it's it's it's. it's I, I mean, it's nonstop. People just walk across the street. They don't even look left or right anymore. 
the yeah. stuff we are supposed to teach little kids. Not only this, oh my God, this is this is paining me now. I have to I have to talk about it. But right. <laughs> kids are being groomed to live yes. in 45 yes. degree syndrome. It's not uncommon for a parent to give a child, a toddler, one of these in their stroller. It's very common. And they sell them now. Um, I saw uh, it, it was the most horrifying thing I've probably ever seen in my life. <laughs> Exaggerating there, but um, <laughs> um, a guy walking down the sidewalk in town, and I'm a people watcher. I love to observe people. I like human behavior. You know, it's 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 because it's educational. Still, yes, it is. Um, like good for him. Poo poo on you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, a guy had two children. One was just at walking age, so a year and a half ish, something like that. Uh, you know, a little little less than that. And one around two and a half, and they both had toy versions that were electronic of these. Mm. And I went right away and looked on Amazon. I said, this can't be a thing. And I went, cell phones <laughs> for kids. Devices. Sure as shit. Sure as shit right there, man. So they're already grooming kids to be uh, unaware, unaware of their surroundings. No, it's okay not to be aware, kids, you know. And and to me, that's child abuse. A child needs to look around. They need to be curious. They need to be bored, you know, so they could figure stuff out, so they could entertain themselves. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I think there's. Where, where'd I, oh, where, where, let me see. So 45 degree syndrome, <laughs> back that up a little bit. Oh, okay. So outsourcing. Yeah. So we need to be um, at some degree, you know, and it, it, different people take it at different levels. The agent in charge of our own executive protection detail. And this is at a. Uh, you know, it's a micro level, right? It's not macro. It's not, you know, so you take what uh, executive protection does, whether it's state department, secret service or whatever, and you, and you whittle that down to what you can do on a day-to-day -day basis to replicate at that micro level, what an executive protection detail does. You're not going to be able to uh, perform a full blown advance <laughs> on the movie theater <laughs> you're going to or the restaurant. It's not sure. going to happen. Um, and you, and you don't have a motorcade, the car you're driving, that's your, Lead car, that's your limo, that's your follow car, all wrapped up in one. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it's easy to do. And it's not only that, but it's it's easy to make it an everyday normal, you know, a new normal. Um, uh, it, 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 it starts out a little rough, but after a while, it just becomes seamless and transparent. You know, my kids don't know that I'm doing things. My wife, my wife does. She switched on. Uh, she, she's got it. She's got it down, but she is too. She's got a very, very sentinel mindset. Mm -hmm. And that is so important too in a relationship is buying with your lifetime teammate. And if you've got a good relationship, that's how you should consider your, your partner is that's my lifetime teammate right there. And man, I am so fortunate that, I mean, she trains, she fights, she switched on, she's very observant and she's engaging too, yeah. you know, and she could hold the conversation. She could be funny and extremely um, uh, 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 engaging in just knowledge, you know, fact, fact points and stuff like that. So, um, but once you have buy-in, you know, from your lifetime teammate, um, it makes life so much easier to develop into your own uh, sentinel. Yeah. And then you could start grooming your kids too. And the, and the kids love it. They love that stuff, <laughs> you know, especially when they're younger, because it's a game. Yes, it you know, is. Uh, you know, hey, uh, this is where we parked, switched on. Uh, you take point when, and I use, I always use Walmart as an example of that. <laughs> and people are like, don't go to Walmart. Dude, everybody knows what Walmart is. I'm not going to just understand it's a big parking lot. It's a big place. There's a lot of sure. chaos and it's the epicenter for disaster planning. Yeah. So just let me use Walmart as an example because everybody, knows. but you know, I would have one of them take point and lead us into the store. Once we get in, I'd Love say it. point, you know, point to the direction we parked, Roger that. And then we do in route rally points. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in rough rally point, because when they're little, they under they get that stuff, and more than because I don't want to be a a helicopter parent. I did no. when they were tiny. Mm, sure. I want to give them freedom, you know, because it's still an executive protection detail, but it's that loosely based one, you know, yeah. where the threat isn't high. So they're kids. I want them to run around a little bit, bounce around to the toy section. Just remember where that in route rally point is, you know, there and you then go. we'd get into the guts of the store, and then you say. All right, kids. And, you know, we're talking like that good age of curiousness, like five, seven, you know, that kind of stuff. That's when they're really into it. 
where is the closest emergency exit? And they're, you know, <laughs> right there. And then you give them another task. It's like, all right, if for some reason we had to go through that door, which way, left or right, do we need to go to get to our car? Mm. And then you see the gears turning. And my son was really good at it. He'd go, we have to go to the right. I'd say, yep. <laughs> but I could see the gears turning, you know, yeah. he's searching for the answer. It's in there somewhere. It's up in the sky here. Uh, but that, but, it, but it was fun, you know. Man. What's, like, yeah, 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 yeah. You're giving them leadership. Right. That, that's mentoring. Yep. yep, right. And then not only that, but turning them into sm- to little leaders as well, you know, to free thinkers. Yeah. Uh, yep. Instead of being being trapped in this electronic world, you know, and uh, and I still am t- still tell them today. I mean, they're nineteen and twenty one, and they could be doing something so benign. I'm going to the grocery store. I say, Roger that. But they always give me a five point contingency plan. <laughs> really, I mean, it, but we've established that rule. Right, that's a family you know? culture that you've created. Sure. Yeah, yeah, but it's easy. Hey, I'm going to the grocery store. I'm going with so and so. I'll be back at this time. 10, four. And I'll say, Hey, you know, if it's like, cause I, I get nervous when I'm nervous driving in and around town because it, I, I will boldly, boldly state with that. And I'll say no exaggeration that most drivers are um, distracted. Most drivers nowadays are distracted. Yes, sir. And if you peek on two way streets and you look into the car that's coming your way, Cell phones right in their face. And this is sure. most. And, it ha- and it, there's no age attached to this. It could be 16. It could be 75. They're all yeah. distracted. So I always tell my kids, right, right of that, hey, be careful out there. Just remember, drive like everybody on the road is trying to kill you. Because yep. they are. Inadvertently. <laughs> you know, they're yeah. not. But, yep. but they're, they're not responsible. Yeah. Everybody on the road is trying to kill you, but I say it to them all the time. And I, and so it doesn't become commonplace like a mantra. I'll say it differently every time, you know, just a little bit instead of like a, a, a obligatory uh, mantra, you know, just a little differently every time. Cause I want them to think about it differently every time uh, because it, 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 having them drive worries, worries me, you know, having my wife drive. I mean, she drives to, she drives an hour, a couple of times, uh, one way a couple times a week to go to class mm-hmm. and it just it's unnerving only because i see it you know i see that how how just unaware and distracted we are man we are so devolving as a species it's not even funny man we aren't long for this planet bro <laughs> long. mother nature is gonna chew us up and spit us out life is becoming so easy like yeah it, it right is. and and that's that that constant, uh, it, it goes through my mind a lot. Like I've worked so hard to create a life for my family mm-hmm. and it is making it so easy for them. <laughs> right, right, right. right. Like, like that's yes. my goal as a father, as a right. husband. Like mm-hmm. I, I want them to have opportunities. I want them to have these things. And it's constantly on my mind, yet it's not creating an environment like I have to manufacture difficulty at times. You right. Know? I'm not, you know, I, I'm talking very broadly. Of course, here, of course. Yeah, yeah. Life yep. can be difficult uh, yep. for sure with mm-hmm. the three little ones. But no, there's no doubt. I'm guilty of it too. Um, yep. And and th- just being able to think that through, having a family plan, like you said, making games out of things. Like I, I love all those things that those are the things that we can directly mm-hmm. um, impact right now that mm-hmm. they don't have to see paranoid. And we become such creatures of habit that teaching kids and if you can speak to any examples of this of in emergencies in uh those those moments of crisis teaching kids teaching adults frankly that it's okay to break some rules in Mm -hmm. those moments to save a life we become so one track that i do this every day i go in this path every day um it became very clear with you know all the the school um active shooter stuff that came out you know years ago and now about how kids were exiting buildings the same they were walking on the sidewalks they weren't going to a safety they were following the drill because that's what we drilled and how do we get into a mindset of when it's time to be safe, we have to critically think, we have to keep our composure, and we have to move to safety. And, right. And those types of things is like, man, that that stuff is constantly like, how do I come up with new ways to uh, encourage that mentality and those skills under pressure? 
Yeah. Right. I mean, that's a, that's a conundrum, <laughs> you know, it really is. Uh, and, um, uh, what, what was your original question when you started that out? I was really listening. I was into it. And, uh, <laughs> Man, you're going to make me have to hit rewind now. Yeah, yeah, no, um, no, no, hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I was thinking but, about a family plan and, um, oh, yeah, right. Kid, kid, yep. Kids, right. On so, board you know, with that. The, the one thing I think that's easy, you know, so, um, you know, family plan, we have, of course, group text. A lot of, a lot of families have that, right? Group text. And we communicate on that a lot. Um, I, I, I remind, I, I know what I wanted to say because you, you, you talked about it here at the beginning was, um, I owe my, um, parental leadership style is, uh, example, you know, said lead by example. Mm -hmm. So they see me, they see, they, they, they see it all the time. They know what I'm doing. You know, that they know that, um, <clears throat> you know, it's not good to be late, light out of uniform. They know that, um, you know, work starts in the morning and, and it, and it finishes when it finishes. And then there's decompression time. Uh, there's decompression time because you earned it. You know, ah, you, you, you you're, you were at peace. You're like, yes, I kicked ass <laughs> today. I can decompress. I can grab that pint. I can go downtown with my bride and goof off a little bit, come home and watch some stupid TV. Um, because I, I like that. I, I, I like to say that every night is Saturday night, but every morning is Monday morning, mm -hmm. you know, every morning. Because when you're in business for yourself, you know, you work every day. Um, and they see me, you know, working out every day. I remind them, you know, hey, you got to freaking get your exercise in. Strong people are harder to kill. They're harder to kill. Um, and that's a struggle with young, with youngsters nowadays yeah. is the exercise thing. It's a struggle. Yeah. Whew. And that struggle is real <laughs> with me. Um Damn. But, uh, you know, <laughs> because I want them to be, uh, I want them to be their own sentinels too. When I got them cars, we went to, um, ACE hardware with, uh, with milk crates and I got stuff for their cars. You know, I was like, what should be in the trunk of your car? There you, you know, go. Okay. Right. We know, how, we know how to change a tire now, and, but we still need it. That needs to be practiced periodically too. Yeah. You know, change a tire. Um, but what needs to be in the trunk of your car, you know? So we just got, and it was probably like 50 bucks. I think I put up a, a little thing on the interwebs about it, either on YouTube channel or on, I think I may have put it on the Instagram uh, a couple of years sure. ago. You know, these things should be in your kid's car. Don't just get him a car and say, good luck. But you know, <laughs> you got that first aid kit and they understand, all right, this is a basic first aid kit, you know, Absolutely. Um, they, they have an emergency blanket. They have water. They have some lickies and chewies. They've got light. They've got uh, emergency signal gear. Um, you know, these things they are in their car. They've got a small tool kit, you know, just a small yeah. tool kit. Um, but, uh, 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 they're it, with, with kids like that until they have kids on their own, they're not going to understand the the value of those less sure, you know, sure. until shit goes south. Yep. And usually that's when people go, damn it. I should have done this, you know? Sure. Yeah. Those foundational yeah. skills and, you know, and even along with it, like nothing frustrates me more when I see a car and there's just stuff everywhere. I'm like, unfortunately, my mind goes to there's 4 million projectiles in this car when you hit something at 60 mile an hour that Im immediately are going to launch at you. <laughs> yeah, well, it was well to see there's something about that, too, when people have just the tons of crap in their car, how they do something is how they do everything. Mm. You know, that's cluttered car, cluttered brain. Yep, yeah, that's that's Word an indicator. Right there. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm no, like, no, but um, that, you know, good. when it comes to bad things <laughs> happening and people going, "Oh man, if only I would have done this." You, one of your guests, a buddy of mine, uh, you had in the past, Tony Blower. Yes, sir. He's got yeah. a great one that says, uh, "Experience is something you get shortly after you need it." <laughs> <laughs> that wisdom, wisdom. Yep. I hope everybody yeah. heard that. Wisdom. Yeah, that like that's that. one I use that one all the time when I because I run Sentinel courses and I talk about that one all the time. Experience is something you get shortly after you need it. So, um, but it's so true with most people. Sure. I just want to give them a head start so they don't have to get to that place and go, damn it. And man, I get it all the time from people. Hey, thank you for putting out the Sunday Sentinel sermons in that book, because yes. this happened to me. And they'll send me these long anecdotes and how this little thing 
this little piece of knowledge or this little gizmo, whatever it was, helped them uh, come out of this uh, 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 bad spot in time uh, victoriously, you know, uh, and man, it makes me freaking real happy. I'm like, hell yeah, bro. You're your own sentinel. Good yeah, for you. And, and, and that attitude I think is what is so attractive to your message is like y- you embrace it when I hear it from you. Like y- yep. it's truly, it's, it's passion because it, 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 it goes deeper. And, um, some of your, your posts, the, the, the Sunday sermons is, you know, got me thinking, and I present this a lot of telling people to to have that mental simulation about these bad things that can happen. And there's a lot of thought, like I I I tell this, and, and please, if you can elaborate and even help me further think about this, I'd mm-hmm. love to hear it. Of I, I tell people when it comes to mental simulation, I, I tell them think about being in a car crash. You rolled your car, you're upside down. Oh, you're in a ditch. Oh, that ditch had water in it. Yep. And Oh, you're unconscious now, mm-hmm. and oh, your two kids are in the back seat. Yep. They're, mm-hmm. Oh, they're in their car seat. Yep, and they're upside down. And they're upside down, and mm-hmm. they see that you're unconscious. Have you ever taught your kids how to cut themselves out of their car seat? Have you ever right. taught them it's okay to break the window? It's right. okay mm-hmm. that if daddy can't help you, that you can save your own life? And I need you, actually, if I can't help you, to get your three-year-old brother out of their seat, too. And instantly I see crowds burst into tears because mm-hmm. they get emotional because they've never thought about it. Yep. Heck, I get emotional sometimes thinking about it with my own children, like— that's a bad day, but have I done anything to prepare them for that moment? Right. Yeah. Hold on. Let me write that there because this is so good because I talk about this one a lot. Um, so you called it mental, uh, mental stimulation. stimulation. Yep. I, 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 to me, it's just like mental preparedness, you know, so visual, visualize worst case scenario in wherever you are. So you're at, com- you know, comfort. Um, and I, I wrote about this in that Sentinel book too, you know, when let's say you're in a restaurant uh, and there's windows everywhere. And I remember talking to my kids about this when they were young in Cracker Barrel, in a Cracker Barrel restaurant. We were eating breakfast. And I talked to them about it uh, because I'm looking. They were like, what are you looking at? And I said, I'm just I'm visualizing worst case scenario. Mm-hmm. For example, um, let's say somebody comes in with a shotgun right now. They come into that front door uh emergency exits back there but let's say that's full of the sheeple you know and you, you can't necessarily go in the direction of sheeple because the sheeple have no plan they really don't they're going to go where the first person takes them mm. that's where the sheeple are going to go is that the right answer it might be they may have gotten lucky but i i i tell them you know visualize those windows right there you know, throwing a freaking chair through those windows, you know, throwing a freaking chair, getting out that way. Um, That might not be the best plan either, but I'm visualizing worst case scenario and uh, uh, probable courses of action, you know, um, that uh, can be put into effect immediately in the event something, something goes south. Long-term memory to short-term memory because you thought about it. Yep. And, And I do that everywhere I go, uh, think of, and I think just worst case. And, the, and the, here's the other thing too, is you look around, um, and I always pick up, I just make eye contact with people and like, you know, friendly, you know, not, you know, you're not looking at <laughs> mean me, mugging like, them. <laughs> up. but it's good to, um, scan a room and look for both assets and liabilities. Um, now there's been a couple s- scenarios I've been in where, um, there's been like high stress, like somebody started something and this has the potential to escalate and you look around and that's when you find out who are assets and who are liabilities, because you'll see a dude looking back at you with the same look and he'll just give you a, yep. You know, one of those, because if this escalates, I'm going to need backup. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to need it right now. Yeah. And that's happened, happened to me once, uh, at a, Big concert, big rock, big heavy metal concert a couple years back where I saw some shit happening and it was like, all right, and I'm looking for the closest exit. I got my wife with me. I need to make make sure that whatever I do, I don't exacerbate the situation to make it worse and to put her in danger, There you go. but that I could get out or 
to squelch this whole thing. Sure. Uh, and I remember looking around and going, all right, yeah, this is going south. This group right here full of dickheads is getting bigger and worse. <laughs> And then you look and then boom, yep, asset, boom, asset, asset. And I was like, oh, thank Christ, man. These guys look like me or they have the same, yep. they have the same Switched shit going on. on. Yeah. Yeah. They have the same shit going on up there. Um, but that's part of that sentinel mindset too, you know, um, yeah. cause you, 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 you can't assault the OBJ all sui sponte every time, you know, <laughs> sometimes you need backup. You need a second, a second person. You need a teammate. Yeah. And in a lot of cases that teammate, you don't, you don't know who they are. I mean, I do that on airplanes. Anytime I board an airplane, sure. I look at the people coming in. I look at the people I'm passing when I sit down. Who are my assets and who are my liabilities? Yeah. Uh, because I want to be able to grab that guy and say, let's go. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. Oh, I do man. it. Um, and I, there's so many different examples. You know, it, I'll give you a, 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 one scenario. And, and it, it was completely benign. But I am not the person who is going to say, Eh, that's probably nothing. I'm not going to be that guy. I am always going to investigate and I'm going to make it look like it's just benign as hell. It's super benign. I regular a pub. I, I am a regular at a pub in town. I love sure. it. It's my, it's a public place. You know, it's Irish pub. I love going there. I love my pub peeps and I know most of them We're I'm cordial. They're my pub peeps. You know, we don't hang out. We don't have barbecues together and dinners. But I know them and I know who I could trust amongst them. But like many people, they are 45 degree syndrome people. They're losing consciousness as well. And I'm there and I do this all the time there um, because you know who strangers are. I call them, I call them others. Mm. And my wife and I, that's there. Here, here yes, comes sir. a couple others. <laughs> and now others are different. It's a tourist town. So we get a lot of golfers, golfers. Okay. You could tell a mile away because they're still in their golf attire, <laughs> you know? All right, yep. we got rained out, and they're all in yep. their polo shirts, polo and slacks, and tight, yes, their polo slacks, <laughs> and their and their and their tightless caps. Uh, but others are different. Uh, so we were there um, a couple of weeks ago, and it was a unusually uh, unseasonably warm day. It was high eighties, mm -hmm. like it is today right now in North Carolina. Oh. But this was several weeks ago, and it was high eighties, sunny out, and we're sitting outside, and the other came in. Um, and I'm looking at all my pub peeps and none of them are aware of this other, and he's wearing a trench coat. Huh? Did not. Fit. So I look at, uh, any, anybody else and I'm, and I'm saying anybody and my wife got it right away, but I grab one of my dudes. I say, Hey, come on inside with me. And I just say trench coat and, and the bar. He goes, Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. Cause it was odd trench yeah. coat, you know, or if a guy comes in to my pub, with a backpack and he sets it down on the floor. I am going to investigate. I'm not going to say it's probably nothing. I'm not going to do that, it, but it's, I'm going to make it benign. You know, he's not going to know it's going to be transparent and he's not yep. going to know. Unless of course that guy with a backpack goes outside and I've done that. I say, Hey bro, you left your backpack in here. He said, Oh, I'm just getting a smoke. And I'll just, and I'll say, well, Hey, just take it with you. And I'll set it right outside the door. <laughs> And they'll go, oh, okay. And if they get it, they get it. They understand. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad. My bad. Yep. Yeah. If they don't, then, you know, that's, that's a red flag. But what does that cost? And what kind of training does that take? Nothing. It requires no training. None. Yeah. You look for stuff that's outside. Of the, you know, you, I apologize again. Choice of words. You see things, you know, that are outside of the ordinary, you know, and when you see things that are outside of the ordinary, you just act on them, but you know, without, without raising anybody else's concerns, because 99.9% .9 of the time it's benign, but that point 1%, it could be some, sh could be some shit. Yeah. You don't, you don't want to bet every, your life and everybody you're with on, you know, yeah. just assuming, right. You know, investigate, check it out, take action. And Hey, those are those communication skills that are so important. If you just engage somebody, make eye contact with them. Hey man, what's up? You can, dude, you know that it's so easy, you know, and, 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 <laughs> and, and I tell you, that's a real good, um, attribute or quality to have as a sentinel be engaging with people, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and having the ability to, to perform, um, like verbal jujitsu, Yep. It's so important because that's another thing. People say, oh, yeah, I want to be a sentinel, but I can't fight. I'm like, how good are you at talking to somebody, though? Yeah. Can you de-escalate? Do you have – because I, I got, like, one of my best buddies. Um, he, he's not he, – he's, he's not, uh, I wouldn't say, a 
incredible fighter physically, but I know he could kick dudes' asses with verbal jujitsu. That's my uh, buddy uh, CJ Ortez. We do the uh, Ortiz. We do the podcast together. Right on, right on. But uh, it, you, so it, 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 ver- having verbal skills, people skills like that is so important. It's a really good quality to have yeah. in uh, being the agent in charge of your own executive protection detail, not being a freaking dickhead. <laughs> there you go. There yeah. you go. Real no, important. That's, that's awesome. Well, man, look, I, I, I want to respect your time and we, we've hit some awesome topics here. Uh, yeah. r- really cool. I, I love how these things go, man. When my mind's one way and we just take some dives down that I think are going to be really beneficial to everybody out there listening right now. Good, I, good. I appreciate it. Dude, it, it would be, it, I'd be remiss. T- tell me the, the basic dude stuff story. Like when did Ooh. that start? Like, let you know me what? hear That's it. So, Cause so uh, much I, fun. I, I if, if somebody doesn't know the kind of the weeds of really what you get into, I'm sure yep. they've heard, uh, whether it's on uh, the IG or whether it's on YouTube or something, I'm sure they've heard a video. So uh, I always said when people ask, hey, the basic dude stuff. Oh, man, I love yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what? It, 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 that has been a fun – you know, that's that's like almost – like four years old. It's like three and a half years is that old. How now. long it is now? Right. Wow. End of 2019. Tag on. Okay. Now, end of 2019. I'm sitting in my recliner with a double bourbon <laughs> in my Ranger panties because I'm in. I'm in now. I'm in zombie mode. Yeah, you know. You go. Yep. But I got my monitors <laughs> below my flat screen TV. I could see every blind spot of my house, so it's permissible to be in the white at that point. <laughs> there you go. And I'm chatting with my wife about. Uh, getting new appliances and she's saying yeah we could have you know a plumber install this and that and I went Rebecca you can install all this stuff she's like you can I'm like Rebecca I know all the stuff that dude should be able to do you know the basic stuff and I went on and on about it. And it, <laughs> I was like I don't know the advanced stuff but I know all the basic stuff you know just stuff like stuff that dudes should be able to do when they own a home or a car um, you know, I just know the basic stuff. The, and then I just said, I said, and, and it, but by whispered, I said, you know, the basic dude stuff. And I went, basic dude stuff, Rebecca, Rebecca. And I wrote it down. She goes, <laughs> well, I said, hold on, give me a few minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I started writing down. I had two pages oh filled in like 10 minutes. <laughs> Everything from tying a double Windsor tie to treating your wife well, to being able to make a good cup of coffee, to cooking a steak, to building a table, to fixing your car. I mean, it just went on to, 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 to tie in the right it's kind awesome. of knot on a, on a hook. You know, it just went on. I was like, oh, my God, what the hell? What a hook. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> and then um. So I started those and uh, it, it became real fun. And I realized in, in, near immediately that, well, uh, people were starting to copy. So I had to get, I had to trademark it. <laughs> I had to trademark it real fast. Uh, yep. And I think I, yeah, I did that in uh, 2020. Um, uh, <laughs> and then um, the, the, the biggest benefit to that and the greatest reward, little kids, little kids uh, love basic dude stuff. So then I had cool. to clean it up. Uh, because I had some stuff that was borderline, sure. like every once in a while, ass or shit would come out, uh-huh. or um, I would do stuff like uh, maintaining a good ash on your cigar, you know, which is, <laughs> but the thing is, I had to scrub that or, you know, knowing the right way how to pour a uh, an, an IPA. Uh, so I took out all the booze, all the <laughs> smoking cigars, you know, made sure I cleaned it all up uh, because little kids all over the planet. Love basic dude stuff. So that's now that has become my intended audience. You know, so I try to make it a little funny, you know, looking into the camera, basic dude stuff. (laughs) And then with a joke, with the dad joke at the end, you know. Yeah, right Um, on, man. But uh, it's been so much fun. It's been it's been a riot. And, um, you know, uh, and then I had to. Uh, put in the notes the uh, preemptive stri- strikes on douchebaggery because there's always a pro out there. He'll pick one thing out and say, there's a better way of doing that. Y- yes, of course there is. And I talked about it in the notes. I get that. It's a way, not the way, bro. Yeah, man. I'm just saying that, you know, or, you know, I, I, my wife bought me a falconry lesson, you know, and, and, um, and I'm talking about all the birds, you know, peregrine falcon, deer falcon, this and that. And I say, appreciating Mother Nature is basic dude stuff. And guys were like, falconry is not basic dude stuff. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> hey, someone's uh, always got to call it. Oh, no, but it's no. so much fun, you know. And um, it, it, man, it, once again, acting on a whim, right? 
that was a whim that was acting on an epiphany yeah. and wow the freaking reaction that got man and then the and the copies oh. the, the, the the thousands of people who are copying it now which yeah, copyright yeah, yeah. you know trademark <laughs> sure but yeah, yeah it has to be an honor in some ways too that people are like absolutely that and being yep. like hey this this is really cool because there there is uh, uh, learning points in there uh, yep. of of what you say and it's like hey I need to, that's that curiosity like yes. I I need to dig deeper into that yep. like do I know how to do that like if that is so basic that yeah it's probably something I should know how to do I should know how to take care of my family in that way so hey go 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 find a YouTube video on it or something that's I don't right know. <laughs> Bro, you know what in a lot of those things there's some things I don't know how to do. And I'm like, I could do this. Let me just look up a YouTube video. Let me verify it with another one and another one to make sure that, you know, there's cross pollinization there. Sure. And then you do it, you know, like people will say, where do you, how do you know all this stuff? Research, bro. Just do some research. <laughs> it doesn't take that long. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. I know a lot of basic dude stuff, but I know, I, I don't know a lot either. And I accept that. Sure. So I'm sure. going to research it and figure it out. Yeah. Right on. Right on. Well, look, man, how do, um, what are some of the ways that um, people can reach out? What are some of the different things that you got going on that people can engage with you and maybe come to some courses? Would you talk a little bit about some of the things you offer? Before sure, close absolutely. Out here? So um, my my platform is um, most of it's under T Max Inc. T M A C S I N C. That's both my website, and my IG platform. I got an entertaining uh, YouTube channel, Pat Mac P A T M A C. Um, we've got the University of Badassery podcast. Uh, uh, those have been fun because we do, we, uh, they're educational based. Um, yeah. and, uh, let me see what else. What about some courses or anything that you got? Well, cor on? courses, I, I do run private courses. My open enrollment okay. sells out quick. My 2023 okay. sold out in two weeks in Good August night. of 22. Okay. Fantastic. So Good they sell Good out quick. You. So yeah. people will ask me, they'll like, Hey bro, I saw your classes are sold out. Y yeah. They sold out last year. In August, yes. Um, so you so, be on top of But people could hit me up for uh, one-on-ones, you know. Okay, all right. And T Max Inc., you know. Right on. Because right of my on. email and everything's through that as well. Yep. Very good. Well, well, look, man, I appreciate you, brother. I, I know we've never met in person or anything, but just the, the little bit of time we got to spend together, man, you, you, you're the real deal. I appreciate what you're doing and how you're helping so many people. You've, you've helped me a lot with both professionally and just thinking about how to keep my family safe. So I, right on. I owe a lot of gratitude to you for that. And um, I, I look forward to everything you got coming out. Keep learning. Keep pushing the envelope. Um, look, I'm a small operation when I'm uh, not at my day job. But uh, if there's any way I can push something out or help what you're doing, uh, the Interrupted Podcast, the whole Interrupted group is just is ready to do it. So uh, I appreciate you. If you have any closing thoughts, you could. Uh, no, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm going to go work out now. <laughs> uh, I, I love it. Yeah, no, yeah. Though, that, is a, that is a good thing. I, I, it was on my list, but we didn't get to it yeah. uh, today about like just the functional fitness and the things. That's that a whole separate podcast on. right there. <laughs> it, 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 it probably is. But everybody, when you check them out um, over on IG, you, you'll see a lot going on. On there there's a lot to learn there lots to and and just dive into so um check that out we'll make sure we link everything up in the show notes and uh we'll be rocking and rolling and hey man someday if the opportunity comes up i'd love to talk to you more about that and uh we'll go down that rabbit hole too so i appreciate cool. you and uh and keep, keep getting after it man thank you very much i really appreciate being a guest you're a great host too hey i i appreciate that man <clears throat> I, I really do Thank you. But you have a good one. Have a good workout, man. And uh, we'll be talking to you real soon. Right on. Bye-bye, right, folks. <laughs>